Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got to jump into this. Uh, so I, I'm going to butcher his name. Ald- Alden Enright. Alden Aaron Wright. There you go. You Alden Aaron Wright. Yeah. Uh, he is now our new Han Solo he's back our, in the day. He's our young Han. Uh, so we got uh, we got Millie Clark mm-hmm. playing playing the the female lead. Yeah, Kira. Yeah. His uh, I'd say kind of a love interest. Yeah, for sure, to a degree. No degree. question. They're like friends, but you know, maybe want some more. Grew up together. Yep. Uh, and so they they get separated in the you know in their younger years. What three years goes by, mm-hmm. and he's like, I'm gonna get her back. Yeah. You know, she, they got separated from the plant they were trying to escape, and so in that time <laughs> he joins the Empire <laughs> to become a pilot. Doesn't really go that way. Uh, finds a band of uh, it's called, I'm gonna call them misfits. Yeah, well, they're mercenary misfits led by Woody Harrelson. Yeah, he goes AWOL <laughs> for the Empire. <laughs> That's true. To join them, <laughs> uh, we meet Chewbacca along the way, played by the new guy Junus Suatamo, who's this seven foot tall Finnish basketball player. I know it's sad not to hear Peter Mayhew. Yeah, but this guy's pretty good. This guy's great. <laughs> so we'll get to that. This guy's great. Uh, and so, but they gotta you know they, they're. T- Basically, given the task to steal some fuel, yeah. And so they, things go wrong. They're like, okay, well, now we have a new plan, but we're gonna need a really fast ship. Who should we get? Well, it's Donald Glover playing Lando Calrissian. It's not Billy D. Williams anymore. No. <laughs> and we get the I call it. It's the Millennium Falcon that looks like an Apple Store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crisp, clean, perfect. smells like pledge. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Lando keeps a good ship. He does. He does. <laughs> so he's better than Han at keeping things nice. <laughs> well, if you saw a new hope, we'll yeah. get to that too. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of your story. I mean, without ruining too much, I don't want to. You know, like I said, we got a whole show to talk about this. Yeah. But I don't want to spoil things. Right. But I'm gonna jump in real fast. The first thing I think people are gonna have to get over for, to, to enjoy this. It's not Harrison Ford. Get over it. It's <laughs> definitely not Harrison Ford. Yeah. It's definitely not Harrison Ford. But He's not on the same level of star wattage. Well, neither was Harrison when he did it. Oh, I don't know, man. There's something about him in that Oh, movie. you just mean as, a, just, as, a, as an actor in himself. Ter- yeah, in terms of just like pulling you in gotcha. as a viewer. It's yeah. just not the same level. He's got of, some work to do. He definitely does. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got some work to do. There, there's moments where I'm like, that's Han. He's that's not Han. as strong at this point in his career as Harrison Ford was in his at the time that he played Han. Exactly. So there feels like a gap. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and then, you know, I guess the other big actor in this one is Donald Glover. Donald Glover, yeah. As, as Lando Calrissian. And I'm going to say it. I, he's perfect. I mean, the image is there. You're like, that's young Lando. Yep. And there's moments where... He nails Billy Dee Williams. The first sentence you hear before you even see his face, you feel like, oh man, Billy Dee came in and did some voice work. Yep. It sounds like him. But there are times when all of a sudden he'll start talking, and all of a sudden I'm like, that's just earned from just Atlanta. Earned. <laughs> it's just earned. It's, that's Childish Gambino right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is fine because he's still a great actor, but it, it, it kind of threw me off a little bit because yeah. it was such a perfect Billy Dee. And yeah. I don't know if they just had different takes or whatever. I don't know what Ron Howard was thinking of. That's the director. Yeah. Um, and, I, and that's another thing I want to jump into. I, I like Ron Howard. I do. and Because he's got some great movies back there. He's got, you know, Willow's great. I like Backdraft. But there's things that like. Do you, do you realize you're talking about the '90s though? I well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. It, it feels very antique. Some of this movie, some of the directing choices. Yeah. Well, you know, we had the guys from Lego Batman, yeah. you know, and all them, and and they got taken out for yeah. whatever reasons, yeah. and so they put Ron Howard in. And the first thing I thought was, I like Ron Howard, but it's like a giant scoop of vanilla ice cream. And so, like, there's no style there. It's just, you know, it's there and it looks pretty. Some, but some people are young for their age. Some people are old for their age. Yeah. Ron Howard is old for his age. Yeah. And this movie feels like that. When I say antique, I don't mean it as a compliment. It sure. doesn't feel contemporary. It no. doesn't feel like the kind of things, like, you just, you're in the middle of this movie thinking, man, where's Ryan Johnson? Yeah. Where's, where's Joss? I want a fresh take on this material. Yeah. And it's no. very straight down the middle. Because you look at these, you know, these side stories, like Rogue One. Yeah. It had style. It was raw. Like, you know, even, it sounds stupid, but even the stormtroopers just, like, marching through the ocean. You're like, I've never seen that before. It you know? may be the best <laughs> Star Wars movie of all time. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's one of these Star Wars stories. So you kind of needed Han Solo's story to be on that level. And it's not quite in terms yeah. of the direction. Sure. Yeah. It's getting there, you know, yeah. and, and, and I like the story. And, yeah. and the sets are great. The set pieces are great, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, some we'll, fun stuff. We'll, we'll talk about that, yeah. about the about the action sequences, because there's some good stuff. Oh, my goodness. So uh, but that'll do it for the first part. Yeah. And there's a lot more coming about Solo. We got more to say. Coming up next on Big Movie Mouth Off, we're going to talk about VOD for the month of June. How are we already halfway through this year? And we're both apparently looking for new jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
All right. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about you know the acting and stuff like that, but we didn't get really to the set pieces. Is one of the things. And one of the things it's funny because uh, my wife is like, "What is the Kessel Run?" And I go, "Well, it uh, what's it?" He says, "I'm I'm Han Solo, the captain of the Millennium Falcon." Yeah. What's the Millennium Falcon? You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Right. It's the ship that did the Kessel Run in twelve parts. Exactly. Bam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, that's it's a callback to New Hope. It's it's so cool yeah. and like that's and it, speaking of a New Hope, that's what is fun about Solo. I will say because it, I've always been said I'm not a huge fan of prequels in the sense that is Chewie gonna get hit by that rock and right, die? You no, know he's not. Is Han gonna get shot in the face? No, because his son killed him in Force Awakens. <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> I thought we we're gonna do the spoiler free. <laughs> no, nah, you haven't seen Force Awakens. That's not my problem. Yeah, it's too bad for you. Uh, but I will say though. When we meet so, uh, Solo in you know in the Cantina 1977 film, yeah. A New Hope, we don't know anything about him. All he says is, "I'll give you a ride," yeah. you know, and I've got this really cool ship outside. Yeah, and, and you and you you learn things as you go yeah. about his relationship with Jabba and things like that, but not a lot of backstory. No, not I mean his like, story kind of starts then. Jabba yeah, pretty forward. much. Yeah. I mean, you know he's got a history. You, you know, do because and, because of what Jabba does to him, but and you don't know how he met Chewbacca. You know, right. like that, that's what's great about this film is that yep. you do fill in the blanks of this guy. This movie had a lot of lore to establish. Mm-hmm. How he got the gun. How he got oh, yeah. his name. I, that was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how he met Chewbacca, how they became friends. A lot of that lore is established very artfully, I think. Sure. But once in a while, they beat you over the face with like a fraternity paddle. To, That's to make Howard. The point. Exactly. <laughs> That's when the movie becomes Ron Howard's movie. And that, those are the moments where I disconnected a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where I thought, oh, we get it. You don't have to punch <laughs> us straight in the face with this one. They do make it the point, though, and I won't say where or when. Uh, Han likes to shoot first. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think if anything, Ron Howard did, or um, Kasdan, the, the screenwriter, yeah, well, made that point very clear. The Kasdan's plural um, <laughs> wrote this one. Oh, that's true, his son, too. Yeah. The, um, the, no, there's a shoot first moment <laughs> that is like, okay, yeah. that will never be debated. No, never again. <laughs> Han shoots first. That's so that, just how it works. That's what I mean about the moments when Ron was able to be subtle yeah. and do something that the fans would love. That he didn't have to hit them with a hammer in the forehead. And even if the fans who do know where he, what he's hinting at, the people who don't know what's happening, you know, because there, there's gonna be little kids that go in there. They're sure. just like, oh, you shot him. You know, like that, still like, a it, great moment. Though, oh yeah. for them. It's yeah. it's it's a great movie moment for them. The more I think about, it, the more I enjoyed it. I do want to see it again. It's funny because as the time has gone by, because this is one that we saw pretty far from the premiere. It's almost two weeks ago. Almost two. I saw it one week ago. You saw it two weeks yeah. ago, and it doesn't premiere until a few days from now, as we record. Yeah. As the time has gone by. My, my enjoyment of the movie has gone up, yeah. but also the things that bother me have too. Yeah. <laughs> Both things have increased in my mind, and, and they bothered me to the sense that this movie doesn't, in my opinion, yeah. live up to what Rogue One did. Uh, yeah, it's not, I will say it's not a Rogue One. Definitely not a Rogue, Rogue One. One. I walked out, like, when I, I'll say, when I first walked out of this movie, I was you know, kind of you know, thinking things like you know, positive and negative and stuff yep. like that. When I walked out of Rogue One, I was like screaming. Yep. Like, you know, like that, and I didn't have that reaction with this. That doesn't make it bad. Yep. It just didn't have that oomph. A very important point. We've talked about Woody. We've talked about Alden. Who you're going to bring up. We've talked about uh, Junus or Eunice. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm not yeah. good with Finnish names. We're talking about Donna Glover. Haven't even mentioned Amelia Clark. The character is really underwritten. Yeah. I think her storyline is very, very undercooked, in my opinion. A little bit, yeah. But I, that's not who I thought you were going to say. What? Paul Bettany. Oh, he You're makes right. a great villain. <laughs> he really does, actually. Yeah. And he gets a one-note villain to play. And, and he does in, a lot with it. And with Infinity War, I mean, he just got to go in that bank line and just cash one check and just go right back and do it again. I didn't mean to leave you out, Paul. You're very good at this. <laughs> I think the Amelia Clark character, which is supposed to be so important and so formative yeah. for what makes Han Han, it's just, it's underbaked. I'm at, I'm still sticking at three. Yeah. The three out of four. And I have a feeling if I go see it again, I might jump up to three and a half. Yeah, I'm solidly at three. Yeah. And I pretty th- I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stay there. Stay at three. I think it's a three star movie. All right, so as of right now, yeah. three stars over here. Yeah. Three stars here. I yeah. might go to three and a half if I see it again. Yeah. But definitely check it out. It's worth it, you know, it's worth a viewing. And I think you'll enjoy just no doubt the action it. of it and just the you know the lore of Han Solo. The the thing the thing that Ron gets right are the big set pieces. The big flying yeah. sequences are great. Yep. And you'll real and you'll find out why the Million Falcon looks weird. Yes, you will. <laughs> so that'll do it for yep. this episode of Big Blue Mouth Off. Three stars both here for solo. Yeah. Next week we'll be talking about maybe a drift, maybe action point. I know Ocean's Eight's coming. I'm excited for that one. And, oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. So definitely. Uh, we will see you next week. All right.